in terms of contemporary art, we need to deal with Willie Bester. And he's looking primarily at social and political issues present in South Africa. Specifically, he's looking at apartheid. Apartheid is a period of time in South African history where the white colonial powers took all power and really dehumanized the native population, taking away any of their powers. And so that's going to be the theme of Willie Bester's work, specifically his homage to Steve Biko. Now this is paying homage to the leader or a leader of the South African Black Liberation Movement who would be killed in detention. The painting is packed with references to death and injustice. The wrists are chained in, in a gesture of protest, telling us that Steve Biko is tied to these protests against apartheid. It memorializes Biko and other leaders through the white crosses behind Biko's head, which we can see in the background here. So we already know that this person is, that uh, Biko is already deceased at the time. The numbers refer to dehumanization under apartheid. This idea of taking away someone's identity and replacing it with a number, it has a profound impact on people. It's part of why we do it in prison, is it takes away everything from this person, even their name. Found objects remind the viewer of the slums that are going to be key to this. We see a rich use of texture as well as of collage. We see found items added in. We see these pipes in the upper right. We see what appears to be the front of an intercom here on the right. We see a guitar or guitar-like form at the bottom and machine gun shells uh, lining through the lower center of the painting amongst other pieces. And this is a radical and powerful critique of an oppressive system. This is Willie Bester trying to come to terms with and memorialize what Steve Biko did through visual terms. And there's some story to be told. We get the sense of someone who is being tortured and mistreated. After all, room 619 painted over an intercom gives you the sense of a jail cell of someplace uh, dangerous or foreboding. 1,100 kilometers to Pretoria, and then we see the same thing here next to an ambulance referring to uh, Steve Biko being transported. We see these faces involved. One, a face of terror. Uh, one, just the mouth. And probably referring specifically to forms of torture. And we see uh, this man in a suit uh, who looks very different from everything else. We can assume that he's tied to the torture. We also see a foot with a toe tag telling us that uh, Steve Biko will, of course, die during these trials and tribulations. All of this coming together in this very loud, colorful form. And you might think, well, this is really unusual, very unusually colorful for something that's paying homage. But we see throughout many groups in Africa the use of color in different ways than we would see in the Western world. Black does not necessarily mean mourning. And sometimes you want to draw attention to this work, to this memorial. And what better way of doing it than using these bright colors. The forms are very realistic and it gives us that sense of multiple narratives at once, something that we see in the early Renaissance uh, in Italy, where you'll see multiple scenes from the same story used to tell a narrative more thoroughly than simply picking a single scene. Imagine if Willie Bester had simply cho shown you the death of Steve Biko. It wouldn't tell us anything about his experience or who he was. So this becomes a very powerful and very political piece 
in South Africa in the early 1990s.